Friday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone to another episode of I'm Not Okay Why. I'm Coach Deb. I want to welcome you. We have an amazing show in store for you. We had some program issues, but we are back in one effect. We want to praise God for that. Oh, okay. Man. We're going to start out with a roll call, but I first... The first thing that I want to do is thank everyone for their patience because uh, I'm not okay why I talk radio. We normally start around 4 p.m., you know, each Tuesday and Thursday, but, you know, things happen. So we're going to start it over today, and I want to thank you for staying tuned, okay? Now, uh, the show is continuing. We are continuing to talk about Project 2025, and we have amazing guests that's on the show today, experts to talk about it and break it down in layman's terms, right? And we plan on continuing, uh, you know, to talk about Project 2025, possibly until uh, the voting time. So we will we will see. And of course, for those of you that are listening out there in Radio Land, please go ahead and share, share, share. Share with your neighbors, share on social media. I'm not okay. Why talk radio page? Also share on Really Real Radio um, Facebook page. And we're also on IG because we want everybody listening and we want your questions. No matter what, we want your questions because I believe that I have guests today that are going to be able to answer your questions. And if they don't know, we'll get the answer. Okay. So let's start out uh, first of all. With a disclaimer, I just want to make sure that it's understood that um, the information that's going to be talked about today, it's actually going to come from the PDF, uh, which is a 920 plus pages, which you can actually also go online and get this information yourself. The disclaimer for the radio show is the views and the opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or position that we hold, okay? Now, of course, as we continue to talk, you will hear opinions, you will hear views, and you will also hear facts, and we will note that, note that okay? So let's do a roll call. I've got my beautiful people online, and let's start. Is Pastor Stefan still on the line? Are you still with us, Pastor Stefan? Pastor Stefan is here in the county. Brother, all right. <laughs> Pastor Stefan, thank you, sir, for your patience. Uh, I have been just uh, excited uh, to talk to you and for you to share your your uh, you know your brilliance because I have a really good friend that referred you, Doctor. <laughs> um, you know, Doctor Holly one of the fan favorites of this show people love him because he's raw and uncut and that's what the show is about we are raw uncut talk radio show we don't it's no holes bar because we want to educate inspire and empower our people right so please tell the people who you are and what it is that you do well first of all thank you for having me coach this is a an honor uh, during the technical delays, I got a chance to listen to the other panelists, and I found out one truth, and that is I'm the least of those in this group. Listen, listen. <laughs> so this very smart group, very smart group, very Humility. smart group. And I would just tell you this, to be able to be suggested by Dr. Holly to come on your show again as a second honor, because I'm just proud to say I have his personal cell phone number where many can't get that. So, okay. So I'll That's a that big deal. I'm looking forward to it. I'll just tell you who I am briefly. I am the maturity pastor at One Church ATL in uh, Marietta, Georgia. However, before that, ten years, but ten years in that in that position. Uh, but before that, I have continued to be a federal lobbyist and staffer uh, on Capitol Hill in Washington. Uh, this is my 34th year. So I have uh, had a chance to see a lot, do a lot, learn a lot, and forget a lot. And so what <laughs> I'm going to do is to add benefit to the conversation. I look forward to it again. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I cannot wait for you to share with the people. One thing about this show, we are people of many views. So we represent the entire community. Somebody going to say something that someone needs to hear. So I'm so grateful that you are here, sir. Uh, of course, we have none other than Madam Angelina in the building. Ma'am, please. <laughs> Most definitely. Let me make sure that everyone can hear me. Um, my name is Angeline 
Kane. I am the presidential nominee for 2024 for the National American Independence Party. And I am here today to really talk about what is going on with Project 2025. I am a president for the National, excuse me, for the South Fulton Human Services Coalition here in South Fulton, Georgia. I am a legislative liaison in our community. And I also am a chancellor for the Black Wall Street Institute, where we teach an economic stabilization planning program online. And I'm also a mother of six, a wife of 30 years, and my skills are in executive secretary and also community economic development. And we work to engage the community with our legislature, bureaucracies, businesses, services, and most definitely our law enforcement, teaching us how to engage with them to do the things that's necessary to make our communities thrive. Thank you for being here with us. We welcome you. We have in the building, she has become a part of the family. Amaris, I know that you had an opportunity to share with our guests. Please share with those that are listening. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach Deb, for having me back again. I am honored to now being folded into the family because this family is a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So hi, everyone. Um, for folks who don't know me, my name is Amaris. I also go by Threadworthy online um, on social media. Um, I'm a multifaceted individual with multifaceted interests, but one of my interests has been how to look at the use of technology and the implementation of technology for the use cases of government and public entities. I currently do that work as my employment now, as well as what I research definitely has to also do with that, um, as well as uh, just looking into how these decision makings allow us to bring you know, resources to be allocated to our community, to many different communities in need as well as just understanding policy recommendations from all sides. Like what does that mean for us in stepping forward as a collective, as a community and as all the United States. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. And we're so happy to have you. Welcome back. Uh, we have, well, before we had our issues, we had actually Amos Whit Westmore, um, a part of our group today. Are you still with us? Amos Westmore, are you still with us, sir? Okay, hopefully you will come back. Dr. Adam Dentz, is he still with us? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. So, so glad to have you, sir. Well, I thank you for having me. My name is Dr. Adam Dentz. I happen to be the CEO of a developer organization that actually builds out for uh, with modular technology for affordable housing. And I am also a board member of the Central Georgia Coalition for Black Business. Well, sir, we're so glad to have you. Welcome. I want Thanks. to salute every single one of you for being here with us today. And I do believe that you all have something to add, something that's going to be amazingly inspiring to the people that are listening today, because we are a hungry people. We are hungry for knowledge. We're hungry to know what is next, what is next, and how does that fit for us, okay? So let's start by um, just the first question by uh, being, and I'm, I'm talking to you, Pastor Stefan. Sir, I know that you are familiar with the Project 2025, but sir, in your, in your view, what is it exactly Project 2025? What does that mean to you? I can't hear you. I'm okay. muted. I apologize. Okay, that's okay, first, sir. No problem. First of all, first of all, I'll just share with you this is a very important conversation. Thank and again, you. I've, I've got to give you kudos for having the boldness to introduce the conversation to our community. Uh, but when I think about Project 2025, I look at it from a chronological and historical perspective. 
uh, on my in my time in, on Capitol Hill, I came in right before this thing called the Contract with America. Some of you all may be familiar with it. If not, I'll just tell you, it Please was tell a, us. a very short list that was created by a group called the Heritage Foundation to give instruction to Republicans on how to take over the House and the Senate in 1994 during a midterm election. To how can how can they do that after 40 years of leadership by the Democrats in the House and the Senate? And so with this, this Heritage Foundation, you have to ask the question. I always teach this in Bible study, and that is you've in order to properly study the Bible, you've got to look at it from a contextual criticism type perspective. And that is who's writing, mm -hmm. who, who's the audience, what's the environment? What's, the, what's the, the political situation going on? We've got to ask ourselves that. So when I look at why, am I, what, why does this mean something to me, I have to go back and look at the history of the authors, right? And so what I'm going to, going to do first, I'm going to go back and ask, who's the author? And again, okay. you'll hear this Heritage Foundation. And so what if you are a scholar like the folks on this, on this panel, the first thing you're going to do is go back and research the writers, and so what I did was, of course, and I have done for years, battling against the Heritage Foundation as a lobbyist, I had to go back and do a little history search and just to share with your organ with the people who are listening. And this is so important. Always know who's doing the writing. And so you got to go back to 1973 and look at what was going on at that time. You see, you see me, Amaris, you see where I'm going with this? Go back to 1973 and ask what was going on when this organization was, was birthed. This is on the heels of the civil rights movement. And so there was a reason why this heritage foundation was created. And it was created by three men. You've got to know who they are. You got to look at who was Paul Wayring? Who was Edwin Fulner? Who was Joseph Kors? And what did they believe in? So they started this organization in 1973 and their number one topic. Remember, they are starting an organization from grassroots, from the bottom, from the foundations. Their number one topic is what was going on a place called Bob Jones University. Bob Jones University was one of the first institutions, private institutions, that was a response to integration. It was a way to continue segregation legally by making this private institution. So with the federal government saying, coming in saying that Bob Jones could not operate that way, there had to be a response from a certain group of people. Thus the birth of the Heritage Foundation. So if you go back to the beginning of, of what, why it was established, we can't erase the facts. It, these are facts, these are historical facts. So you have to research Paul Weyrich, you have to research Edwin Fulton, you have to research Joseph Kors. And they had three things they were, they were interested in, these three men. Religion, money from Joseph Kors, Kors beer. It was financial, it was, and then there was this thing that was a little bit controversial, it was politics. Mm -hmm. How do we write what is necessary to allow our people to think group think? Mm -hmm. So we're going to write everything up to do that. So let, I'm just going to end by saying this because I know we're going to get back to this, but I want to yeah. let you know the same organization helped guide the policies of the early 1970s, mid 1970s. And I'm like, I'll come back to those when it comes to things like political, I'm sorry, uh, criminal justice. Mm hmm. Then we're going to go to a man who knew nothing about politics, who was a movie star, where this organization was able to get on the launching pad and go straight up. And that is, they wrote the policies, all of them, for a man by the name of Ronald Reagan, for two, two uh, terms. And since that time, they grew from a staff of nine people to now being the largest think tank in America. That's all I have to say for now, and I'll be quiet because I know Amherst, you're gonna, you, you, and of course, Madam President, you all have something to share on this. Listen, but I just want to start from there. Can we start? Us, we so fidgety right now. <laughs> oh, wow, that was so good. That was very informative. And just for the record, is everything's being recorded, so this is going to be so great for replay. Ooh, we okay. So that's a sealer moment. I promise y'all. I just feel like we need a commercial, but because we done. 
already, you know, lost so much time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bring Amaris in right now. Now, Amaris, um, Hello? I'm going to ask you to piggyback off of our brother. Yes. I, I, I want you to share in your view what, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Project 2025 uh, means to you. Absolutely. And first of all, thank you, Pastor Stefan. Yes. Yes. Um, what you have shared is exactly what's been aligned with my understanding as well. Um, it's very important, like like Pastor Stefan said, we are hearing a lot of uh, sound bites, like 30 second sound bites, a lot of like quick tidbits on what is Project 2025. And so even in our last call, it was very important for us to acknowledge to go directly to the source, going mm. directly to the Heritage Foundation's website, not only seeing numerous policy proposals that they have proposed over the past, um, even yeah. the past 10 to 15 years, but definitely since 1973, 1974, right after Roe v. Wade was overturned, right? Um, and taking a look at that, like what they're presenting, as well as um, the summary, not only of this plan, but of their plan for um, training and employment. Um, so to summarize to me, what Project 2025 is, when you open the document, you see listed in the table of contents, different departments, federal departments of the United States listed individually and each chapter, each article, which different authors have contributed to make this entire book, which is called Mandate for Leadership. Um, <laughs> and so it's articles, it's a, co it's a co coalescing of multiple articles from different authors, from different partners that are providing their um, perspective of not only how they feel a certain federal department is currently operating, but how it is felt that it should be changed, as well as how they feel um, that it may be undermining the the moral or morality of what they deem to be a good Christian infrastructure. I do find gratitude in that they did list details of their mindset, what they hope to dismantle, what they hope to change because it informs us of, of the thinking, right? We, we want to be informed of the thinking, the understanding. What it brings us home to is that the stakes are high. Mm. Our country is run by, we think it's by the president or we think it's by the legislative branch. Yeah, the judicial branch has been really throwing down some hammers and that has directly affected our lives. But what really runs the federal government is each of the executive branch departments, like Department of Transportation, Department of Labor, Department of Health and Human Services, where Social Security comes from, um, Department of Housing and Urban Development, um, everything from the Postal Service, which isn't necessarily a federal department, and I could spend a whole <laughs> another session on the Postal Service, but even still, anything where there's federal influence there has been a recommendation all the way up to the federal reserve and banking that there have been recommendations basically to dismantle to lessen to downgrade or to privatize um and so the stakes are high the stakes are high from my perspective and from reading it i'm not only gaining understanding lastly i'm going to say i'm gaining how Sometimes things are being put in opposition to each other when they're actually not in opposition. And I will share more on that as we get into like deeper dive into this. Anything that's presented thing as mutually exclusive, it's either this or this. I am wary of because usually a solution is usually something right there in the middle that holds both ends. So I'm looking forward to talk more about that too. So thank you, Coach Dev. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Okay, now, Madam, you know, when we spoke earlier, you mentioned something about Coach Deb. Project 25 is not a project. It's a plan. It so, ma'am, please indulge us and share your perspective, your view on Project 2025. Okay. Well, thank you and uh, so much 
for having me on this platform. As citizens, and you know our constitution starts with we the people, we have to understand that we have a duty. When organizations, when politicians offer us these different programs that they believe is good for us, we have to have a say in it. It doesn't matter what organization is bringing it. It doesn't matter what candidate is bringing it. We, the people, have to have a say in it. So to offer to the Republican Party a mandate, which for one, citizens have to know that mandates can only be given by citizens. It is written in our Constitution. So no one can mandate citizens to do anything. That's the reason for our constitution is written, available to many forms, many languages for you to understand what your rights are. So no one can mandate us to do anything. Even if you're part of a party, they cannot mandate you to do anything. So when I state this as being a plan, I'm saying it so that you as a citizen understand that someone is trying to control what happens to you within your society. When someone plans something and mandated for a group of people that has millions of people in that group with family members and also people within their job sphere, they're telling everyone, this is what you're getting ready to do. So we have to be mindful of that. Partisan is biased. That means that you're only thinking about you, your group, and how it's going to affect you and your group. There's exclusion there. There is that lack of inclusivity because the people have to be included. It starts with us. So you're totally excluding the people because everybody's not a Republican, everybody's not a Democrat, everybody's not green. Some people don't wanna be a part of a party. You cannot exclude them. We are looking into moving away from the lack of our democracy norms. We have a constitution. We know how things are supposed to be ran within our local, state and federal governments. There is no real big changes there that are not normal for us. Every two to four years, we elect certain people in certain places, and then we live with whatever that vote is. We support whoever that person is until their term is up. So now we're looking at potential for policy extremism, because when you don't have those checks and balances, you now have the ability for someone to say, this is how it is. This is what we're going to do. And this is how it's done. So that leaves no room for you to be able to make your own decision where we have liberty and freedom in this country, along with our second am amendment. Mm -hmm. It would be an erosion of our checks and balances because just in general life, you can't have all good and you can't have all bad. Right. You got to have that middle road that says, okay, let me think about this. And then we'll come back to the table. This is what I thought. Let's see if we can work something out. But it can't be this way or that way. It has to be a negotiation. We have to be able to say, okay, we can do with this, we can do with that, but let's not do this for sure. So we got to make sure that that erosion is not done. So we have to understand that Project 25, which was conceived by the Heritage Foundation, and we got some good history on that. And we also good got a history. lesson on how mm -hmm. to research what you are yes. hearing, what you see, what you're getting ready to engage in. Because yeah. when you go you're hiring those individuals to do things for you. And if yes. they're not listening to you, you're not doing your job. So we have to understand that this is a foundation for the Republican Foundation. And for disclosure, I am a former Republican and we'll go in later about why I left the Republican Party. And we have to understand that we cannot reduce the participation of the people. Mm -hmm. We cannot. This country, our constitution starts with us 
and in with us mm -hmm. with our responsibilities and our rights in this country. And we cannot have extreme policies in this country. We are a mosaic country of religions and of cultures. So you cannot tell me that my way of life is wrong and your way of life is right. You don't have the right to do that. We have freedom of religion in this country. So for America to stay a democracy, we must follow the rules that was put in place hundreds of years ago for us yeah. to follow and pass on as a torch to our children. That's another CELA moment, you know. This good, good. I'm going to take this moment to speak to the listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day that you should be very, very selfless. Please call up your friends, your neighbors, call up your cousins, your family, call up everyone that you know, because I know this has been a conversation around the dinner table. Nobody knows what they're talking about. You know, you're, 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 you're just repeating information that you've heard someone else and it's fabric fabricated, you know, it's, it's, it's exaggerated. And today is the day where you can come to the table and you can get the facts. You can get the facts, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Have them to log on to reallyrealradio.com. Now, let's bring in Dr. Adam. Dr. Adam, sir, are you still with us? Why, well, yes, I am. Sir, please, please share with us your your view on Project 2025. <clears throat> okay, so my view of Project 2025 is basically that uh, the Christian right is trying to change the U.S. into a Christian state instead of um, a state that separates church and state. And they're going to do it by all sorts of interesting things. Um, I mean, well, they want to in, enforce their views of women's health care, abortion, and really crack down on that. They, they want to get rid of the 25th Amendment limiting uh, a president to two terms. Uh, they want to enforce the death penalty where appropriate and applicable by the president. Um, they want to basically make a surveillance state. Uh, let's see. I put some notes down here. Um, they want to control birth control, IUDs, things like that. Basically, they really want to repress poor people more and more. They want to make the rich even richer. They want to make it so the middle class disappears and there's only two. There's going to be a lower class and there's going to be the 0.001 percenters. And that's really what they're going for. They want to get rid of things like $35 in insulin prices. Um, and they want to stop the ability for women to have medical appointments uh, done via a Zoom type situation. They want to stop uh, pills, to uh, contraceptive pills and other things like abortion pills being sent through the mail. They want to cut 50,000 jobs from the federal government and make them appointed by the president as people that are um, party loyalists. Basically, it's a lot of mimicking what happened in Germany in the 30s is really what this report, in my opinion. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, this deserves an applause of the information uh, that has been expelled today. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just take a brief, brief, brief recess, just a brief recess and let a song play because this is a whole lot of information that the listeners have heard. I hope that they've been taking notes. If you have not, I, require, I, I request that you get pen and paper because there's more information that's gonna be coming your way. This is a lot to digest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited about it. Uh, the panel is going to break down pieces of this policy. Uh, we're, I'm just going to be bringing some information forth from the PDF package. Uh, so now I recommend you go and download it. If you haven't already downloaded the uh, PDF 2025 
uh, uh, package so that you can follow along because I'm going to give information from that package and um, I'm going to give the page number. That way you can just go directly to it. And I'm just going to uh, have the panel to sort of break it down in layman's terms and share to make it more, you know, legible for you to comprehend and understand. But I, I beg of you to please read and do your research. I've gathered here so far from y'all, due diligence is important. Due, di due diligence is important. And I'm so, look, I, sal I salute y'all. So we're going into this, this break and we'll be right back. I think it's important that we take heed to information. I think it's important that we are, that we wake up, wake up and pay attention because um, help is on the way. Oh yeah, help is on the way. So let's start right now with Project 2025 Breakdown. I want to begin with um, Pastor Stefan. Sir, you gave it to us earlier. I mean, an outline of history. It was a history lesson. And I'm grateful that we're going to be replaying this, um, this show because that's going to take a moment. That was a lot to digest. I wasn't even ready for the notes. So I'm excited that we got, we're going to be able to do the replay. But let's go ahead and go into one of the uh, policies uh, in no-fault divorce, complete ban on abortions without exceptions. And that's on page 449 through 503. For those of you that are following along um, with the Project 2025 packet, I recommend that that's what you are doing. And if it's been printed out, I recommend you highlight that particular one and have a notepad and pencil so that you can write in layman's terms what this means, how you can relate that to you, to family, to friends, if you're trying to articulate it to someone that don't quite understand. So sir, can you just enlighten us without taking away from what the policy is, but breaking it down for them that are listening to understand? Sure, let, let me kind of, preface this comment with a couple of things. One is when I was growing up, coach, I was always told the one way to get information past a certain group of people is to put it in writing. Mm. And so the reason I'm, I'm mentioning that coach is because this document, and I want to slow it down just a little bit. If you Please. Don't I don't mind, sir. Take your time. This, this document is over 900 pages. The percentage of Americans that have read this thing, even those who would support it, it's minimal. It's, I would probably guess if we had to do a poll, it would be less than 1% of, of America have read 920-something pages of information. I myself have gotten up to 400-plus pages, and then I've read some in bits and pieces. And so me being a federal lobbyist who I'm used to reading long documents, legal documents, that's what I do, I understand the task for anyone to read all of this. And so for me, I've made it my responsibility to do so. So as you take us to specific page numbers, what I want to do is, is, is look at that if we can, uh, because there's so much more that affects, it's, it's so many other sections yes. that affect our community. Um, and, and, and so what I would just say is this, for the people who are listening, understand this as Amaris mentioned earlier, this document is called a mandate for leadership. But what I will say is this, this is not the first one. This is not the fir first iteration of, a, of this document. So why am I telling you this? You can go back and read mandate one. You can, in 1981, you can go back and read that one. You can go back and read mandate two, mandate three during the Reagan administration, mandate four during the Bush administration. You can go look at all these and they're going to repeat themselves. Why am I saying that, coaches? Because I, we went back in history to the beginning. Yeah. Nothing's going to change. It's basically rewording the same concept. So what I want the listener to understand is this. If you don't agree, like Angeline said earlier, if you don't agree with what they're saying on this side, you must know it to be able to understand how to respond. So if you look at what's going on on, on page four, 450 or so uh, for the next 40, 50 pages, it's a repetition of what's been said from the past. And so what are some of those things? 
there is a desire, which I, I'm a pastor. I, I strongly support strong families. And that's when I, when I applaud, when I hear sister say, I've been married for 30 years, I've been married for 32 years. When I hear that, absolutely, we support family. Amen. We, but that's not everyone's situation. That's so right. we, we should put those who are not in that situation at a, at a social or economic disadvantage. And so some of the things you, that you're going to look at when you look at birth control and those types of things, one of the things these people, these people who authored this, and I want to talk about that a little bit more too. Um, what they, what they do is they talk out of both sides of their mouth. Let's take government out of your life and less as things we want to put the government into your life on. And so the, these are things we can talk about, but I want to just one more thing for the listener to understand before they start reviewing the page numbers. Mm hmm Understand this 920 page document was is very, very well written. Why is it very well written? Because it is the nation's conservative, leading conservative thought leaders. And so with that, and I know several of them personally. Um personally, I've done I've worked with them in, on congressional staff, like Rick Dearborn, who is the who is the deputy chief of staff for uh Donald Trump. Rick and I are friends, his wife and I are friends. I we go down and go on the boat together, mobile. I know them. These are my friends. And so the reason I'm saying this is because these thought leaders, you have to go back and research who before you go into this section, chick uh, coach, you've got to ask who wrote the section. Who wrote the section? And I, I'm, I'm going to turn over some others on the specifics and I'll come back around because I don't want to hog all the time. But I want to say this, please, as a listener, research who wrote the section. It was everyone was given a specific section to write. For example, the one that we should really be con conscious of is the criminal justice piece. So you ask yourself, if one person was, was given the task of writing a whole section, who were they and what is their background? Let me introduce you to Gene Hamilton. Gene Hamilton is an ultra conservative loon. Let me tell you one of the things that's on his website. One of the things his, they've gone after in his website is the American First, I'm sorry, American First Legal Foundation. This is who he is. Put that in your notes because you got to know him. This person wrote every piece in the criminal justice piece. One person. So let me ask you something. What does he believe in? Let me give you one of the first things I saw when I looked under his website, what he says. America First Legal sues Northwestern University for discriminating against white men in faculty hiring. This person who is suing University of Northwestern, University of Northwestern University, is the same person who's writing all the policy for the Republican Party to implement when it comes to African Americans. Do you think he thinks about race when he's writing these documents? I'm sorry to take you off task, and we'll get back around to that that section. No, but you're making it make sense because it's like they need to think. Yes, not just what you're explaining, but it's like where's it deriving from? Right. So, so when I'm teaching Bible study again, if I'm going to if I'm going to teach you Matthew Matthew five and four, I've got to make sure you understand who's writing, what was going on. We talk about this Sermon on the Mount, right? Mm -hmm. We got to go for those three chapters. Who was he talking to? What was his message in its entirety? So the author here for this section, this book of their Bible, right, is Gene Hamilton. So you got to see who was Gene, who was he talking, what was his background, what did he think, what did he write before? And you'll find that if this is the playbook, and I'm sorry to go on, but if this is the, play, if this is the, play, if this is the playbook for the party and has continued to be the playbook of the party for 50 years consistently, We've got to pay attention to what Gene is thinking. So when I look at this, give me give me an example why it's important for the listener to pay attention to the proposal for 2025. Ronald Reagan used this the, the, the 81 version, the first version of this mandate for leadership as his policy driver. 60%, 60% of what the Republicans passed under Reagan came from this document. So let's let's hypothetically say in 2025, the Republican Party is trying to figure out what are we going to work on? What is going to be our legislative pieces? They will, will submit this document in its entirety to every agency and every committee in, how, in the House and Senate and say, this is our, our driver. Understanding now that 2024 and 2025 is different than 1981, where we're not so polarized back then. We're so polarized now, every Republican in Congress, Senate and House, will go by this manual, this Bible. 
in, on their perspective agents, agent in their perspective agencies, and in their in their committees. So I'm, I want to I want to break, throw that out before we get into the specifics of the mind. Don't mind, but I'll circle back around let someone else talk. Okay, I, I'm glad that you are. See, this is what I mean by the breakdown. It's not going to be enough for them to provide and for us to provide information, but you're actually giving tips. You're giving tips on how to move forward, on to on how to gather and understand, plus comprehend what they read. Sure. Because it don't it don't stop it don't start and end here. Right. And let me say one more thing, and I'll be, I'm going to be quiet for a long time because I took up. <laughs> um, I'll say this: be careful on how you receive information. Mm. The reason I say that is because I know. If I can simplify language and put it so brief and to put it on social media and it's being reproduced and reproduced, it becomes the Bible. And so even with Project 20, you and I had this conversation, 2025, yes. Rolls 2025, some of the things that are out on the internet, it's not true. It's fabricated it's, or exaggerated. It's exaggerated and fabricated to make the thinker oppose something that they won't even ever read. It is to scare them. But it's fair, it is, but it's a scary document, right? But I prefer to be afraid of the person I can touch than the boogeyman. And so the book, we gotta take the boogeyman out of how we think. And that is let's study it, read it, take our time, talk about it around the dinner table, get on your social media, ask a couple of questions based on the pages you've seen. Let's have the conversations. Whew. Okay. Wow. This is so good. This is like really, really. So good. And while you have been listening, I know that that has been time for you to come up with, you know, in your own uh, words, you know, without adding or taking away what this actually is. Right. So for you, Amiris, I'm going to repeat it again. And you know something, Pastor, you actually touched on uh, the banned contraceptives on page 449. I didn't even mention that. But that we're going to just gather that because it's within the same uh, uh, page as uh, in no fault divorce. So that's a complete ban on abortions without ex exceptions and the ban on contraceptives. Whew. You take it, uh, Amiris, and share with the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, Pastor Stefan, thank you. Because teaching us how to appropriately research and understand. Come on now. It even like, I was like, oh yeah, look, oh yeah, let me let me remind myself who I'm dealing with or like read about them because I get it. What we tend to do, especially on the mainstream media discussion of this, is very quick to be like, oh my gosh, the extremists. Oh my gosh, the ridiculousness. Oh my gosh, like what what is going on? When these are actual human beings, who spent a lot of time researching and thinking and writing this stuff down. And I think it is imperative that we take them seriously um, and and actually like, like we're doing, understanding the history, their resume, where they've been through their thought Due process diligence. and how it's been directly applied to the documentation. And a lot of stuff you said, Pastor Stephon, I'm on the same page, um, very similar. Like, yes, these are, actual human beings that walk around the DMV and go to DMV events, restaurants, all, these are people. We're all people. Like, but they are people too. And it's important to know the context so then it lends to the writing. Um, I too um, wanted to, while you spoke, I was like, ah, um, Coach Deb, you keep talking about mainly what comes up in the Health and Human Services chapter of Project 2025. Um, I saw in your copy, it said 450 on the PDF from the website. It's on page 482, but it, it is talking about, um, first of all, who wrote it? Um, mm. Roger Severino. Roger Severino, <laughs> whether he, his work under Betsy DeVos in trying to dismantle some of the protections of the Department of Education from like his role as a civil rights He's more of an anti-advocate than an advocate if we really talk about it, but he is touted as like an understanding of how civil rights should be. Um, this is what's driving the writing on the health and human services, which talks about Medicare and Medicaid. It talks about defining what is a medical practice 
as well as other pieces that are like determining the makeup of a family and what a family can and can't do in its makeup. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. The PDF, and that's what's interesting. The PDF, <laughs> the PDF, it's page 482, but on the book itself, because, you know, there's a lot of four words. Yes, it like, keeps changing the numbers. Keep, yeah. 449 on the page itself. But if you're opening the PDF, look for page 482. Got and that, you. that chapter talks about like what is protecting life conscious and bodily integrity and circling back to what Madam Angeline told us that mandate is for each of us to decide it should not be coming down from a top down approach um yes there is value in how we make up our communities our families but as someone who is deeply aligned with the LGBTQ community I know that how we create families are still the creation of families. They're just different, but it's still family. It's still community. And it's very important to recognize like that community building and that autonomy to do so, especially if it's for the uplifting of love of people and of the divine. Like, so all this to say, um, yes, uh, the healthy human services chapter, a big one. Um, there's Department of Labor, there's uh, like criminal criminal history reform. So how the Department of Justice is being handled. All of these things are the different policy recommendations and, and thoughts um, that are being provided. And frequently, and I think this is the part that from, this is AMRA speaking, I'm not speaking for the group. I'm not speaking for what Heritage Foundation is even saying. This is what I'm observing from reading the document is how I don't like how the logic is framed for ju the justification of what they're trying to propose. So frequently they'll say, oh, there's a lot of, there's like 70% of uh, black women who are bearing children unwed. So therefore we need to get rid of this, 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 and this to manage all this immorality that's going on. Or, oh, we're seeing that there's an uptick in discussion on black history. So therefore we need to dismantle the uh, Department of Education and uh, uh, put librarians as sex offenders. Like that is an actual quote in the, in the book, right? Like what librarians, those sweet ladies and gentlemen, uh, who are librarians who are just saying, hey kid, books exist, go for it. Like, come on y'all, come on. So. Uh, there's there's so much more to say happy to come back even more to say more <laughs> but I'm gonna pause there because this train could shoo. <laughs> well I appreciate you opening up that can of worms because we have different listeners and there is a lot of fear mongering so in order for people to vote their heart or vote their conscience they need to know the truth they need to know their options so this is just words in the document. We're trying to bring it to life so that they're able to understand. Madam, please come in and uh, bring it alive. Uh, do you need for me to read that again? Um, uh, no, I, I have a very good justification of what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> and, and once again, I want us to realize that this is not a project, it is a plan. And you've heard the history of how it is a plan and how it has been ongoing. And I'm going to set the stage for us, for us to understand why this is necessary on their side. One of the things that we have to be mindful of, especially during this election, is that this election will be won by the African-American woman. And so therefore they have to tout the African-American woman. So they're pretending as though they are providing the things that they believe, which they mastered themselves, that the women want. We're gonna take this once again back to 1973 when we started coming North and started engaging in some of these policies that was put in place that we heard when our poor parents were back in the South that, oh, life is good in the North. So of course, once we get here, we find out that, okay, yes, you can have a home, but 
you have to have a certain income. And so as a husband and wife with children, you're going to be above that income. So, of course, they talked about it, husband and wife, and husband disagreed and wife agreed because she wanted a nice home with shiny appliances and minimal costs and able to be able to provide food any day for her children. So she decided to stay. He goes back south. And now we have the situation where we have started this project, which was actually done in a university, to show what would happen when you put people in a project situation. So moving forward, not only did we have the projects, we had the Monaghan Report, which re reported that, oh, wait a minute, the Negro family is outpacing other, of every other race in America. So unbeknownst to Monaghan, they utilized that report mm -hmm to start putting things like abortion clinics, the uh, kidney dialysis places, the different services that would make a woman dependent on the federal government and their state government for their livelihood. And you see the results of that today, where now we always look for someone else to tell us what to do tell us how and when to do it, and that they're going to give us a reward at the end. But that result has also devastated our communities, our families, and our country. So now me, the great leadership, is going to come in and just establish, because they also got them on the road of Christianity, Everyone's a Christian when they're more a churchgoer than they are a Christian because they have no idea what Christianity is. And yes, I said that. So that we understand that we have to learn to ask the question. Mm. Ask the question. You want me to do this for you and I need to know why and what benefits do my family receive from this because a $250 right. card don't last for not even a hot second, especially in today where you used to get 50 items, you're getting about four or five items mm -hmm. for that same amount. So we're not thinking we've commit, we've committed the biggest sin of our generation, which is refusing to think. So we have to make sure that we understand how we got to this point to where someone can tell us over and over again, this is the way that you're going to live. When we were already given instruction through our Bible and our constitution, which our constitution is based on, for us to be free and liberated, we can live life the way we choose as long as we're not trending on anyone else. That is all that is asked of us as Americans that we live life the way we want to live it without trending on others. And when someone gathers us into these parties, and this is a one thing and a very good tidbit that people need to understand when they're voting. Our voting system does not allow us all to vote for referendums that guide us in our politics. So we have to understand, hold on for a minute, my phone is not want to behave. Okay. Okay, I've got that off of there. So we have to understand that when we go out and vote, we need to know what we're really voting for, especially in our primaries. Come on now. It, it's in these groups, Democrat, Republican, and then nonpartisan. Nonpartisan does not get to vote for anything except for justices. Republicans make up questions, referendums, which they get from their conventions, bring forth to the party for them to be voted on. And people don't understand that we all are under those referendums. Democrats get to choose people that are in your county, for different positions 
that if you're not Republican or nonpartisan, you don't get to choose like your sheriff. So we need to understand the political process and what that means to us in our communities. Because if I vote for something, someone, they win, and you don't like them, you still have to live under their leadership. So we have to be mindful of that when we're choosing, when we, when, when I am, not who someone told me to, when I choose who I want to elect to represent me, the person I hired because I'm paying them, I'm their boss, they're not my boss. So we have to be mindful of who that is, not going down a ticket, just putting people in because they said so. They gave me a reward for going and voting this way. Mm -hmm. That is not voting. That's you giving up your rights so that people can come with projects like this and tell you, look, I mean, this is great. This is what you need to do because this is what America should look like. We've been in uh -huh. this country over 250 years. We know what America looks like. Uh -huh. We know where it came from. We've used that as a compass to move forward in this country. And that's what we have to continue to do. We have a process in place. I don't need you to give me a playbook as a presidential elect. I know what my playbook is. I know what policies I know I need to put in place because my constituents have told me and I'm following their lead. I'm not following my lead. I'm not following my party's lead and I'm not following the lead of the elites that are pouring in all these monies into these different campaigns so that they may have their way. This is our country. This is not your country, it's not their country, and it's definitely not going to be anybody else's country because we are the last free country that is in our global dynamic. And we have to understand that people look to us to come here. So we're bickering about this and bickering about that and not even following our own constitution as Americans. Being Americans, why would somebody want to come here only to take over? So we have to be very mindful of that with those open borders down there, with those 18 to 35 year olds who are males in this country. That, that's fighting age for us. And for men, for women, 18 to 35 is birthing age. So uh -huh. we have to be very mindful about what's going on here in this plan. They got us chewing on this when we should be worrying about immigration, crime, and the inflation our empty wallets from the policies that are currently in place and, and start working on how we change that. I can tell you now, we're not gonna get past, yeah, let's do that. I mean, I can tell you now, whew, I can tell you now, we're not gonna get past this, the, the num the, this first one, but that's okay. We got until November. So yes. um, Dr. Adams, sir, you know, it's like they all have hit the box that you mentioned that they the uh, uh, representative uh, the 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 ones that are leading the nation trying to get us in, you know, uh, the the so-called Christian box, if you will. Because that alleviates choices that alleviates your, you know, decisions of your own that alleviates you thinking for yourself and being told what to do. We're tired of it. That's not what we're doing no more. So, sir, I want you to, in, in you know, to um, break down what you believe this policy means in a way that you believe that the listeners will comprehend from your from your thinking, from what you articulated to be. Because I do like that you first noted what you believe this whole package is. You know, the whole, I like that you stated that you believe that they are trying to bring everybody into one think tank, you know, to, to, to live one way. And that's mm -hmm. the Christian way. That ain't Bible. <clears throat> that is completely not how the country was set up. Um, I mean, getting rid of Roe versus Wade actually reduced my religious freedoms as a as a, a jewish american 
Um, we believe in general, because if you ask 100 Jews the same question, you're going to get 100 different answers. But in general, we believe that the life of the mother outweighs the existence of a fetus. If the mother's life is in danger, bam, you just get rid of the fetus because that is what we are taught. That is part of our religious beliefs. Therefore, it is actually squashing my religious freedoms in that viewpoint. Yes. But when you have an organization um that basically wants to take hhs and turn it into the department of life but the department of christian life uh mm -hmm. i i live in the united states i did not move to a christian or a catholic country i did not join the army to defend the bible in any way shape or form i came here to do what our forefathers wrote about in the in the Declaration of Independence, that we're supposed to be able to have religious freedom. We're supposed to be able to have the separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. I do not agree with using a long dead or dormant act like the Comstock Act to prosecute mm -hmm. anyone for getting medicine in the mail to stop them from dying from having a fetus that is trying to kill the mother. To be able to whip out something that has been long dead or dormant, depending on the way you look at it, mm -hmm. to be able to prosecute Thanks. people. And then if you sit there and try to take someone to a state that might be friendly, like, oh, anywhere that's not red, um, <laughs> and help someone get an abortion, that you can be persecuted in that state that, that they left as a criminal for helping someone not die from something yeah. that they can't control. I also have firm beliefs in other things, because if we're going to ban the ability to get contraception, then we also need to ban the ability for people to get hard because if God didn't want you to have children, God doesn't want you to take a little blue pill. So we need to make everything fair. And that is not what they're doing to, to, to try to push uh, the biblical views from a Christian viewpoint of what man wrote in the Bible of a man and a woman, I disagree with because man wrote the Bible. It was not written by humans. So if you believe in the Bible, good. I'm glad because if you do and you follow its teachings, you should do what almost every other religion on the planet teaches. And that is to be a good person. And if you're going to be a good person, that means you have to be like your Messiah would be, which would be Jesus. In that manner, you have to actually like the decrepit, the broken, the disposed, the unhoused, the people that don't have anything. And you give them what they need. And the push of viewpoint of Project 2025, which is really anti anything that would ever have been taught by Jesus because he didn't write the Bible. He lived his life in a manner that today mega people would destroy him for being a far leftist individual. And I mean, because he would be the one that would help the street walkers. He would be the ones that would help the lepers. He would be the one that would not hang out with the one percenters, but hang out with the bottom, well, in this country, what, 17%-ish? Um, he would be there doing that thing. And knowing that these people are putting all their stuff in a religious perspective and also raising candidates to be religious candidates, uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. If you're going to do things, and I'm not going to go into anything in particular that certain um, candidates have done, that does not represent a real Christian mindset. And if you call yourself Christian, uh, just being a veteran, it, 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 if you vote for a gentleman that thinks I'm a loser and a sucker for serving my country, defending your, your right to read your Bible, and interpret it any way you want. I don't care if you're a sadist. I don't care if you're a Sikh. I don't care if you're Christian, Jewish, Muslim. I have friends that are honestly all parts of everything. What we really have to get down to is removing the deep-rooted hate that's in this country.
I shouldn't have to go to a town square and see a monument to an insurrectionist government that tried to take over the United States and see Klan members there praising Trump. Not that I'm bringing up anything that's ever happened to me in Covington, Georgia last year in the spring, but this shouldn't happen in the United States that I defended in the military. And I know that was a long rant and I hit on a bunch of points. <laughs> Sir, you're free to speak. It's, a, it's the uh, manipulation tactics for me that um, this these policies are actually, you know, giving. Um, I believe that, you know, your salvation is personal. And God created us to have a choice. We have a will. So that's not what's being implemented here. Our will has been taken. Our choices have been taken. Um, Pastor Stefan, sir, you're the right person to come in right now because it is so important that people understand the one love factor that God loves us all, that we're all humanity, right? And that you shouldn't be made to do a thing. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to sell your soul for what is rightfully yours. So could you talk to the people that are listening? Because you've got all types listening. You've got some that have disagreed with each one of you on line today. You've got some that have agreed with each one of you online today. But what we have to do is talk to a people, one people. So we want to make sure that that one people, as in everyone, understand the importance of making the right decision, the right choice, and understand that it's just to make your own decision to make your own choice and to choose based off of what you've learned, to choose off of what is right, to choose off of knowledge that you know to be facts. Talk to whoever's listening. And- uh, Go ahead, go ahead, continue. You make yes, sure talk to them and, and help them to not walk in offense today. Because that ain't what we're doing. We're not trying to offend. We are actually giving you truth. Speak to them because they got to walk away knowing what to do, the importance of doing what they need to do. Absolutely. You know, I always say this, and you can steal it if you want. I, 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 I I'll borrow it. <laughs> uh, it's free of charge. Uh, but I always say this, and I mean it, and I see it all the time, especially in a country now that has told us that we can't even talk about religion and politics. The reason that people say that is I believe that we must, what I want to share with everyone, we must remember that we can always have conversations to agree if we disagree with one another, if we're focusing on facts. Come on, sir. But what happens is when you run out of facts, you then replace that with emotion. And so what we've got to do is be able to arm ourselves with facts to where if we're having a, con a conversation with, let's say, one of our conservative friends, and I'll say I'm a conservative <laughs> and, and I, I have the background to prove it, but I'm, a, I'm what I guess you would call a factual conservative, not a neoconservative. And so if you, if you look at what we've got to do, family, please hear me as I say this. Once you start feeling like the emotions are peaking, ask yourself, have I, have I run out of facts? And so the more we understand about this in reality, not by sound bites and by, by something someone sent us, if we read this thing and can really understand it, we can have a conversation with anyone who, who's willing to have a factual conversation. So when we talk about this country and its history and those types of things, as a believer, not only that, as a, I'm a biblical teacher, uh, I can disagree with some of the things I heard up to this point. I could. 
Uh, but that's not the purpose because that becomes emotion. Right. That's right, bro. Actually, what I like to say to the to the listener is this. With this with the scripture, there's one common conversation. And that is God created us to replicate him on earth. Period. That's it. It is is it is Matthew 28 telling us that our desi his desire is for us to get to know him from head to toe, using that as an alliteration, uh, learn him and then go out and teach that. That means when I say that in quotes, that teach love, and I hear that all the time, Christians, we should love, we should love, but God is a God of who's just. And one thing about America I found that frustrates me is that freedom comes with a price. And we're saying this is let's just let's just do what makes let's do what makes you feel good, makes you happy. Freedom comes with responsibility. And now in our in our uh you know, now in our 200 plus year is of existence, very young country, I believe that our freedom has allowed us to become very destructive mm -hmm. in, in this season. And a just God would say, no, absolutely not. You guys are exercising a freedom that I don't agree with. Yeah. Because I'm a just God too. Yeah. And so I'm gonna have God is gonna say things like this to us. He's gonna say, I hate divorce and to hate things I hate and love what I love. That's what he's gonna say. He's gonna mm -hmm. say, Malachi, I hate divorce. So if you're a believer, you should be like this. I'm gonna fight for my marriage. Because if I'm gonna follow him and replicate him on earth, I'm not gonna be the one. We're not gonna be the one to, to do that. And so when it comes to a bearing a child will make better decisions on who we lay with and how that looks. If we honor a just God that says that's going to be damaging to that child if you create a child under those circumstances. And so I'm going to keep it real when I talk, guys. We've got to go back to looking at documents like this, spending some time. It is a lot of pages. But if you commit, imagine this, if you read 50 pages a day, you're done in 18 days. Come on now. We're Come done. Now. And, you, and you know it. Take Get your highlighter out. You do, it may take you to do those 50 pages. It, to me, it took me about an hour to do about 50 pages. And because it's big print, right? And so I'm just going to tell everyone, you know, the God's desire as a pastor is for us to, John, 20, John 17 says this, this is it's for us to dwell in unity. I don't care whose side you on. Come on now. If you're speaking a language that says separation and division, liberal or, or conservative, you're against God. So for me, I've got to find out what does he want from us? And how can I walk in a way that says he's loving, he's just, and he wants everyone to learn from us what he is. That's all I got to say. Yes. Amen. That was good. That was good. We're going to get ready to... Um, bring it in for today but what i want to do is i want to do um normally i do a replay on thursdays i want to keep all of y'all okay and those of you that can come back until we are through here please come because we have other panelists that didn't show up because they you know work and different things like that but listen we're all needed we all are needed because of the different listeners Y'all spoke to somebody today that needed to hear from you, right? So what we're going to do is, this is so strong. This is so meaty. This is so rich. It's like that pure chocolate. We've got to do a replay. You can't just know what, what all that's been discussed. There's no way. You can't. You're going to sit in this and you need to hear it again, over and over again. So we're going to do a replay for Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. And we're going to come back next Tuesday and do another live. I would ask you all to do your homework because the next one that we're going to. Read 50 pages. Yeah, yeah, what was that? Read 50 pages. Read 50 pages, just like the brother said. I love it. And I make an announcement to all the readers. Y'all do just like uh, Pastor Stefan said, because we want active participation. Download your PDF and read 50 pages 
starting today, starting today, start today, because you got a whole lot to catch up on. And as they begin to articulate, you know, their perspective or their view about it, it will hit home. This is not foreign when you get someone that uh, explains it so well. So the next thing that we're going to be uh, discussing is going to be additional tax breaks for corporations and the 1%. That's what we're going to highlight. And we're going to also talk about higher taxes for the working class um, elimination uh, of unions and worker protections. So I need for y'all to look into that and bring to the table your view, your perspective. And I love it that, um, Madam, you have, oh my God, I just feel it in my shanana. You have given tips. This is something that's never been discussed yes. on how to vote. Come mm -hmm. on. It's yes. like people have been, a lot of people don't vote because they are just totally confused, don't yes. understand why they need to vote and if the vote even matters. This has been so good. I hate that we have to end it, but I'm telling you, I'm really overwhelmed right now with all of this information. I'm so grateful. I don't know what to do. I'm so grateful. And I just feel it. I feel the energy of so many other people that are feeling like me. It's like mm -hmm. you need time to see law. You really do. You need time to just rest in this information. So you are invited back next Tuesday. Um, and we will start on time because what we won't do is use the other program. It did not work for us. It worked last week, but it was kind of off. But this, what we're going to do is continue to work with the program where you know it hasn't been any breaks. It worked. So we're going to keep this program going. But please, 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 please come back. Uh, Madam, I want you to be able to let the people know right now. Please tell them that you are actually running for president. Mm -hmm. Please tell them what type of, uh, of, of uh, actually the, the uh, government that you're working with. Okay. All right. Well, first, uh, the pronunciation of her name is Angeline. It's Angeline Payne. I Angeline. Am, yes. yes I am a nominee for the National American Independence Party, which is a new party. We are looking to make sure that citizens know that they have a choice that they have options, that we have hope, that we don't have to stay in this political fog. As you can see, most of the politicians that you're seeing have a lot of personal issues, which I always say, if you have a personal issue, you need to take care of that personal issue. That is not my business. I cannot help you with it. So you need to take care of that. And it does not need to be in the political landscape. Our concerns with the political landscape is what the people want, need, and desire. And that is our charge to make sure that we're taking care of the needs, wants, and desires of the citizens. And anything I have personal going on is personal with me. I know where to take that. I'm also a per se uh, attorney who takes care of my personal business and I teach people how to take care of their personal business because no one knows the facts like you. So you need to make sure that you understand as we go into this election that you need to choose a candidate that cares about your wallet, not their wallet, your wallet, because you're the one who has to take care of your family, feed your family, go on vacations, and enjoy what we call the American dream in this country. And in this country where we live in a capitalistic society, you do need those digits to be able to do that. And it has to be affordable for you to be able to enjoy it. So my platform is a 360 degree circle of concern around our children in education and community law enforcement and legislation. We have to be embodied in those things because we hire those people with our tax dollars to do those things. We don't send them up there for vacation. 
And we as citizens need to learn and understand that. I teach citizens how to engage with our legislatures through a course called Community Civics 101. And we have every right written into our constitution that we can engage with amendments to that constitution through our article five to make sure that those individuals that we hire, and I'm gonna say that one more time, that we hire to represent us are doing the things that we ask them to do and that there are terms, limits put on them so that every American, and when we have this opportunity to talk more about me, I'm gonna let you know the process for even running for office. It is not as difficult and as financially heavy as people make it seem to be that you have to be a millionaire or billionaire. As a citizen of this United States, you can run from any, for any office, local, state, and federal. You are born with that right as a CEO of this country. So don't let someone tell you because you have a speech impediment, because you have a disability, because you're this color or that color, that you cannot engage in our political process. You can, and I'm here to prove it, because I can be president. Amen. Ooh. Yes. Now tell them how to contact you, please. The best way to get in contact with me is to go to our website, M-I Party, that's A-M-I-P-A-R-T-Y dot org. Or you can definitely call me personally at 404-552-5352. I don't mind my phone being blown up because it's blown up anyway. So you can call me or either write me at Madam President Payne, Payne spelled P as in Paul, A Y N E dot com. Excuse me, at gmail.com. That's my website. Gmail at gmail.com. And my website is currently under maintenance. So definitely email me, go to our party website, or give me a call. I'm ready and able to speak with you and let you know more about me and get to bet me so that you understand that you do have hope. We do have leadership that cares about America, knows that we are a mosaic of cultures in this country. We are removing the labels and we are cultural Americans. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, now, Amiris, please um, let the people know how they can reach you. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, thank you, Coach Deb. Um, I know with my name also, like Madam President, um, Amaris um, is the first name, but I go by Threadworthy online. So on Instagram, you can follow me at Threadworthy Inside, um, as well as on TikTok you can, and YouTube, you can follow me at Threadworthy um, with the I at the end. So Threadworthy, one word, but an I at the end. Um, okay. Yes, th those are the easiest ways to reach me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really grateful. I'm also really grateful that um, that we held space for both love of all faith practices yes. of, of not just Christianity. We talked about Judaism. We talked a little bit about Islam, about like, like how our country was founded with the separation of church and state, which is also very important because religious freedom is the First Amendment, but also that God was still in the room. And that God is love and that love is still in the room. And so I'm also grateful that we have that opportunity to bring that context as well. I always say to people, don't let my inclusion stance fool you. I am a firm believer and lover of God, but I also think God intentionally designed everyone wonderfully made and that all should be folded in with love and understanding. And so that was the premise of why I founded um, my organization and the content creation that I do. So, thank well, you. he definitely made us all unique in uh, mm -hmm. in in the image of him. Um, thank you so much. And um, now, I will see you next week, right? Okay, cool. Okay. Yes. Now, um, Doctor Adam, sir, how can the people reach you, sir? What you have uh, to offer? Where's your church? And, and 
An easy way to get in touch with me would be through Instagram or threads. Mm -hmm. I'm not Bob 74. So it's N O T B O B seven, four. Uh, I will let people know my content is not always work friendly. Yes. Sir. Uh, but other than that, um, if you contact me in there and we actually chat, I am very, very willing and able to share contact information too. Thank you so much. And of course, now uh, I saved uh, to go to uh, Pastor Stefan because I'm going to let him take us out in prayer. But I just want to, I know that I speak for a number of people. I've been getting some crazy DMs. Brother, you've given us a lesson, a history lesson uh, today. Uh, and in the very beginning, introduction was a history lesson on how we need to do our research when it comes to, that was more than just for voting. That was just on information on how, even how to study, you know, how to um, retain information. Because if you do your due diligence, when you are studying, you can actually retain the information because you got all these different things um, that are going on. I want to also acknowledge uh, something that you stated and I'm putting it out there for everyone to uh, have permission, as he stated, to use it, but please put his name on it. When you run out of facts, you replace it with emotion. I feel like speaking in tongues. When you run out of facts, for real, for real, you get, em you get all out of whack and you just start saying anything. You know, you lose it. So, sir, that is your that is your quote. When you run out of facts, you replace with emotion. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma'ams. Y'all have listen, ain't no crumbs, as young people can say. We have so much to chew on. We got so much to marinate. This has been amazing. I wish we could have gone longer. We've gotten a history lesson. We got tips on voting. We've gotten, you know, information that relate to so many different people that are listening. And I know they're feeling some kind of way that we spoke to them. They feel heard. They feel seen. People feel heard and seen today because different ones on here spoke to someone that's like saying right now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what they're saying. So Pastor Stefan, sir, I want you to tell us where your church is at, sir. Uh, I've received some DMs where people are interested in knowing where you are and how they can go, you know, visit your church and Please tell them how they can reach you. Awesome. And again, thank you for the invite. It's been it's a pleasure, pleasure finally meeting you in person. Um, One Church ATL is located at 1330 Cobb Parkway Northwest. Uh, we are teaching church. Um, and no, no, you may not get a good hooping session ever. And you and you will very uh we will not get a TED talk or motivational speeches. We're here to teach the word because the word is transformative. Uh, and I believe that because I'm a walking example of it. If you want to reach me, uh, you can send me any, uh, a message on Instagram at I am Stefan Bell, or you can send it to the OG at me on Facebook at Stefan Bell, and you can search me by One Church ATL. Uh, you can also go to the church's website, which is onechurchatl.org. Uh, and that's how you find us. Uh, before I pray, of course, out of respect for uh, everyone, I want to just make sure that um, you understand I'm praying as a man who is not a Christian by title, but a Christian by walk and a Christian by relationship. And so that's the way I pray. And so I'm, I'm not going to be able to do anything else. So if we could just pray ourselves out and for those who are willing to, share, to join me in that prayer. Uh, let's do that, and then we'll meet again and have more conversation. Let's pray. Our Father God, thank you for this opportunity, God. You are purposeful. You are purposeful in calling this group together because, God, you want justice. You want love to spread. You want us to know more about you. 
Yahweh, the creator of everything. And so, God, as we are here today, allow us to continue to be vessels of education, vessels of information, vessels of fact, and also, God, just vessels of leadership. As we look at a mandate to leadership, your word tells us that we're mandated to lead. We're mandated to lead people in, through discipleship and information. You say, you tell us in your word that your people perish because of their own ignorance. And so for us, God, we, we look for sustainability here and not only in, in America, but also in our community. God, a community right now that has its struggles. God, allow us to be the voices, unified and even independently as we go forth separate, separate from this phone call, that we'll be able to share something that gives hope, that gives joy, peace of mind, and even instills in our, our listeners, God, the ability to be invigorated to do and not just to hear. So God, we just say thank you. We look forward to what is next and how you feed us and gifts us to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard I'm Not, I'm not Okay Why Talk Radio, which we aim to inspire and empower. Remember to love yourself, love everybody, and be an example. Have an amazing day. You deserve it. Thank you.